Thorin, um, and he is a fantastic, fantastic ambassador for the company. We're so lucky to have him here to, with us today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tim O'Day. sound excited at all. Yeah! You have no idea how loud you were back there. And I've never seen so many penguins and nannies in one place. You don't need a personal opinion down here. You? Ready for a jolly holiday of a cinematic experience? Yeah! Uh, I, I have to ask, I have to ask, who has seen a really great movie called Saving Mr. Banks? Yeah! Now, let's be honest, who has not seen Saving Mr. Banks? Raise your hand. Okay, well, in Mary Poppins, there's a scene that happens on Cherry Tree Lane where all the nannies get blown away. Be careful when you leave tonight. That's all I want to say. Well, it is so appropriate that we have such a special guest with us tonight. I think you may have seen him maybe once or twice. I know you've heard his music. And he is a, an Oscar winner, a Grammy winner, uh, let's see, uh, received the Medal of Arts from the White House, and I think, I think you'd agree with me, he's a Disney legend, right? Yeah! So ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Richard M. Sherman! This is a very special house. Well, we were talking backstage. We were talking about the fact that Citizen Kane premiered here, and uh, the great Audrey Hepburn movie uh, Sabrina, and uh, Doctor Shivago. Come on, and of course Beauty and the Beast. And you were telling us backstage that when you were a, 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 a wee little Richard, little yes. man, what what films did you come and see? Well, I saw the Bob Hope, Bing Crosby uh, comedies. You know, The Road to Zanzibar and The Road to Bali and all those wonderful, funny pictures, which I certainly loved. No car chases. Nobody got killed. It was just fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got a great crowd. You ever see that? Well, now, talking of nostalgia, can you believe it's the 50th anniversary of Mary Poppins? It's really, really, I know, it's an amazing thing, 50 years, I can't believe it. And my bio still says I'm 39. I, I, should, I should update it a little bit. No, it's amazing. It's 50 whole years since the picture opened. And, and that, of course, topped this year with Saving Mr. Banks. I know, isn't that, it's a wonderful film. It really is. They did a great job. Tom Hanks was a great Disney. He did well, I, I have to ask, what did, you think, what did you think of your performance in Saving Mr. Banks? Well, I, I thought he was wonderful. Jason Schwartzman, he played Richard, he played me. He did a great job. You know, he watched the way I played the piano and everything. He sings better than I do. I, you know, I want to know him. But uh, he certainly threw himself into it. He was delightful. Everyone in the cast was great. I thought Emma Thompson was superb. She was awesome. It's a little known fact. I mean, this is a true story. This really did happen. This strange lady with all her problems came and descended upon us. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on Richard. Don't give us your opinion. Oh, <laughs> no, actually, it was, it was quite an amazing experience. Two weeks uh, in another world. 
You cleaned that up, didn't you? I did. Yeah. <laughs> Fiction, fictional land. <laughs> well, now, you were a, uh, what, a special consultant on Sydney, Mr. Oh, Bernie? Well, I was I, I call a musical consultant, but actually I consulted on the personalities of Walt and, uh, and uh, Richard Sherman, I knew him, you know. <laughs> and Robert Sherman, I knew him quite well, and, and Don DeGrati, this wonderful guy that we worked with on the storyline. It was, it was wonderful. I have to ask, because I remember seeing you the day after they shot the big uh, premiere sequence at the Chinese Theater across right. the street. That had to just been really strange for you to be on the set recreating this premiere 50 years ago that you were at, but you're at now with your avatar or whoever that is. <laughs> it's an amazing, it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful thrill. Actually, my wife Elizabeth and I were there watching Richard Sherman and, and Elizabeth <laughs> going into the theater. It was quite an experience to see that. And uh, of course, you know, they've done it with such love and such care. It was very, very beautifully reproduced. It was really something special. If you haven't seen it, we're selling tickets. We'll be <laughs> That was a plug, wasn't it? <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about the music for Mary Poppins. And uh, look, these songs have become classics. They're standards in, in the American uh, songbook. And let's, let's roll over a few tunes. So let's, let's go with the first one. Let's go with the song that he won the Academy Award for, that Richard and, and uh, Robert won the Academy Award for, which is Jim Jim Cherie. Right, well, before I play it, let me say this. Uh, he's, in the film, you'll see a fellow named Don DeGrati, and Don DeGrati was this wonderful story man. He was a sketch artist. He was brilliant at that. And he could, you could describe a scene, and he'd be sketching it out, and pretty soon you'd actually see the scene. He was wonderful. One day, Bob and I, my brother Bob and I, came into his office, and we'd been working on a sequence for Poppins, and we saw a little sketch in the corner of one of the storyboards, and it was a sketch of a little chimney sweep who was all covered in soot, with his arms slung over his brooms, uh, walking down the road and whistling. And we looked at that and said, who is this guy? And what is that? And he said, well, this is the chapter in one of the other books about Mary Poppins shaking hands with this chimney sweep. And the children say, you're going to get soot all over you. She says, don't you know it's luck when you shake with a sweep? And I said, Oh my God, that's a, there's a song title. They, I said, no, that's not a song title, but it's an idea for a song. My brother said, we've got to write a song. This has got to be done. And so he played around with the words chimney, because that's about a mouthful. So we played with it a little bit, and out came this lucky song for us. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim tree. A sweep is as lucky as lucky can be. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chimu. Good luck will rub off when I shake hands with you. Or blow me a kiss and that's lucky too. Now as the ladder of life has been strung, you may think a sweep's on the bottom most rung. Though I spend me time in the ashes and smoke, in this whole wide world, there's no happier Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chimney. A sweep is as lucky as lucky can be. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chim. Good luck will rub off when I shake hands with you. Now, as the ladder of life has been strung, you may think a sweep's on the bottom most rung. I spends me time in the ashes and smoke. In this whole wide world, there's no happier road. Out where the smoke is all billowed and curled between pavement and stars, that's the chimney sweep's world. When there's hardly no day and hardly no night, there's things half in shadows and halfway in light. On the rooftops of London, When you're with a sweet, you're in glad company. Now where is there a more happier crew than them what sings chim chim chimney chim 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 Thank you.
credit to a different guy who sang it so beautifully, and Judy Andrews. Now there's another song in the film, uh, speaking of Julie Andrews, right. that you wrote just for her, right. which was Spoonful of Sugar. Exactly. Tell us how that came about. Well, you know, actually Bob and I had written a song, a ballad, we called it The Eyes of Love, a very pretty song, it had philosophy, but it was a, a sort of a, a slow-moving song, it wasn't, didn't have a pep to it, and uh, Julie came to hear the, the score, she heard all the songs that we had written, and she was very enthusiastic, she was beautiful. But she confessed to Walt Disney after our meeting that ballad, that keynote song that she sings, it's a, it's a nice philosophy, but I don't feel it's, it's the right kind of spirit. It should have a bright kind of a snap to it. And so uh, Walt broke the news to us, you know, later. He said, Julie was very thrilled with your score. She likes your songs, but this one song she didn't like. And we felt kind of crushed because that was our big one. That, we liked that the most. And he said, no, we're going to have to do something different, so you guys will think of something. Like, I know. And so we... <laughs> and so we... Yeah. The pressure. And so we thought, and we thought, trying to come up with a little slogan that said the same thing as the eyes of love. You can see things much more beautifully and everything if you look through, through eyes that care, that love. And we didn't want to say it that way. We had, a, had another way of saying it. And we were thinking of a, a slogan like an apple a day, or, uh, stitch in time saves nine, that kind of a little expression. And Bob's son, Bob's son Jeff, came home from school one day. He had had the Salk vaccine, but he had not taken it uh, as a vaccination, but through the arm. He had actually been given a cube of sugar. And Bob said, did it hurt when you had this vaccine? He said, oh no. They put the medicine on a cube of sugar and he saw it like candy and it was easy. It was and so Bob, bless his heart, came in the next day with a glassy look on his face. I've got a title, I've got a title. I said, what's the title? A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. I said, that's the worst title. <laughs> Wait a minute, oh no, my God, it's great, it's wonderful, it's original, it's special. And so we played that, and uh, there's one little line in the song that we did especially for Julie, because she wanted that song to be written, and the song, well, I'll, I'll sing it. When you'll hear the line, you'll know she wanted a song with snap. And so this is the song. <laughs> Be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap the jobs again. And you enjoy it, you got it. And every task you undertake becomes a piece of cake, a lark, a spree. It's very clear to see. has very little time to rest while gathering his bits of twine and twig. No quite intent in his pursuit, he has a merry tune to two. He knows a song will move the job along for I think you have a perfect song to keep the energy going. Oh, again. good. Yeah. You do? You do? I wonder what that would be. I have no idea, but it's a it's a long word. Oh, I've heard of that one. Well, that's a subtle hint, isn't it? What could it be? <laughs> because I was afraid to speak when I was just a lad. Me father gave me nose a tweak and told me I was bad. But then one day I learned a word, save me aching nose, the biggest word you ever heard, and this is how it goes. How's it go? It's super califragilistic, expialidocious, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. If you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious. Super califragilistic, expialidocious. I'm 
I traveled all around the world and everywhere I went. I knew there were folks who would say, there goes a clever gent, Medusa Maharajas, pass the time of day with me. I say a special word, and then they ask me into tea. It's super kind of fabulous, it's the hour. Can anybody say it backwards? Anybody talking to you? Somebody? I don't see any hands. I'll do it. Don't you sound the XP stick fragile Kelly Rufus. Don't try it, you might hurt yourself. <laughs> so when the cat has got the tongue is only for dismay. Just sum it up, this word, and then you've got a lot to say. But better use it carefully, or it can change your life. Tonight I said to a girl, and now me girls be white. She's super califragilistic XP Aladoja. Super califragilistic XP You know what, let's talk about, and let's, let's just do a quick medley of this, but these are songs you're probably not familiar with that got cut from the movie. Oh, I know. We, we, we wrote a lot of songs because we didn't have the final script until quite a bit later. Uh, we were just working with a story idea, and we were developing chapters of Mrs. Travers' books. And so many times we, we came up with an idea, and we liked it, and it was stayed for a while, and then we said, we don't need it anymore. And, or else Walt would say, we don't we need this, and it's unnecessary. And so I'll play a couple of the songs that, that we wrote that we kind of liked a lot, but it didn't quite happen. One of them was, uh, um, there was a, a chapter called Bad Tuesday in one of the, one of the books, and I think the first book, where the children uh, were called nasty and ornery, and they were being, they were being <clears throat> difficult. And <clears throat> Mrs. Travers says, uh, I mean, I mean, Julie Andrews, uh, as, as Mary Poppins says, uh, you children got up on the wrong side of the bed today. And they said, the wrong side of the bed? I get on the same side every... You got off on the wrong side. And then she said, she was to sing this song. Everybody starts the day in a single... <clears throat> My voice is going here. Maybe we get some water off. <clears throat> and everybody starts the day in a similar way. Every single morning, we open our eyes with drone, drones and sighs. While we're stretching and yawning, and we fold aside the counterpane. And the, and the moment is at hand Which side of the bed will our head be on When on our feet we stand Some days the right side is the wrong side Some days the left side is the wrong side Those days your face is on the long side All day long some days the right side is the right side. Some days the left side is the right side. Those days your face is on the bright side all day long. It's up to you to choose which way your day is going to start. The right side or the wrong side is decided by your heart. So try to think about the bright things. You'll find that they are all the right things. You'll be on the right side, never on the wrong. All day long. You have to use your imagination. The one thing we could do with Walt is we could say, this is going to be sung by a very beautiful voice, a very pure girl, lady's voice. And he could hear through what I was doing to what he was going to hear in the movie. Hmm. And believe me, that's a talent in itself. I mean, the man was incredible that way. We didn't have to make elaborate demos or anything. I just sing him the song. And of course, that one didn't make it. Then we had a song that we wrote for Admiral Boone. Now, you remember Admiral Boone? He's, a, he's the one that shot off his cannon, you know, at the crack of 8 o'clock in the morning at 6 o'clock at night. Boom, would go the cannon. And so we decided we'd have a song that Admiral Boone would sing. And he had a, a couple of, of uh, sort of assistants. We wound up with only one assistant, Binnacle, his name was, who was uh, his assistant when he was shooting his gun off. And uh, 
Well, this is the song that we originally had written for Admiral Boone. Erwin Kossel, our musical director, liked the main theme so much, he used that theme in the movie. Every time we saw Admiral Boone, you heard this little main chorus. But this is the whole song, the way, most of the song, the way we originally had done it. Who makes things armada with daring and the skill and cut them up just like a mutton pie? And one of the men said, uh, Sir, Sir, Sir Francis Drake. He says, that's right you are, that's right you are. And who went at Trafalgar displaying his sort of skill and thereby put Napoleon in the eye? And he says, uh, that was uh, Horatio Alves, Horatio Nelson, correct. And who in the Royal Navy established that rigid time, that firm and flex flexible innocent in a film known as Chi? And they say, I know who, right you are. Uh, da -da 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 -da. That was good lyric there. Da -da 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 -da. da -da 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 -da. Is known throughout the Alberal team. It's me. And it is I, sir. I, sir. Oh, yes, it is I. And I will oh. I, I, I only want to make an excuse because I've never played that song in 53 years. So I'm to dust that one off. It's a, it's a, little, bit, a little bit tired. There's another song that I particularly liked, and we actually used it. We tried to use it in Poppins, and we tried to use it in uh, Bedknobs and Broomsticks. And both times, in both those movies, this song just wound up on the cutting room floor. It never got into the picture. We actually have recordings and everything. And it's when Mary Poppins, it started, was inspired by the story where Mary Poppins set, uh, tells the story of uh, a zoo where the zoo was kept by the animals and the people were in the cages. And we said, that's kind of fun, we could have some fun with that, and so we coined a word. It's called a chimpanzee. And our chimpanzee went something like this. I, again, 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> that's still off, that's still off. Um, I'm, I'm blanking out, you know, I'll get it. Uh, I rehearsed this this afternoon, so I, I've got it. Uh, uh. <coughs> In Timbuktu, there's a chimpanzee that's run by a chimpanzee. It's an oddish place where the human race is under lock and key. And on their backs, they wear small plaques for the animals to view. We'll specify the reasons why they're locked in the chimpanzee. If you're boisterous and bumptious, you'll grist for the chimpanzee. If you're overly rambunctious, you'll whisk to Timbuktu. Laughs, laughs, nothing but laughs. You know who's laughing at who? It's the animals there who give and stare at you. Now I have an orchestra, which I'm going to bring. The orchestra's in my hand. Wait a second, I'll get it. Don't, don't go away. Wait a there it is, I got it. <laughs> More rhythm. You may never play the music halls in all your wildest dreams, but Bill and blast to the chimpanzee and the animals burst their seams. It takes a lot of talent and time to become a West End attraction, but in this place one rude release gets a marvelous reaction. Oh, lots, lots, nothing but lots, you know who's laughing at who? It's the animals there who will miss their great with me incredulously at the raucous bunches proudly at you and the chimpanzee. <laughs> now you guys were laughing when he pulled the kazoo out, but before you came in and he was outside, before you guys arrived, he made 150 bucks off that kazoo. <laughs> well now, let's be honest, yes. not everything that you and Robert wrote, you know, was a hit. Oh, I know. You I had know. a lot of hits. I, in fact, there's a, there's a fellow, there's a culprit in this audience right now. Who's well, responsible? We wrote, we wrote so many songs together. Well, we'll get to we'll get to him in a moment. Yeah. But okay. 
So you, you had hits, we all know you had hit songs, but you, you had a, another genre of songs that you, you used to like to call smash flops. <laughs> smash flops. Why don't you explain to this nice group what a smash flop is? Well, it's, you see, the thing is quality sometimes doesn't pay, has anything to do with the fact that a song does not, does not succeed. Sometimes it's a matter of bad timing. Now, I have a friend, a very dear friend named Milt Larson. He's right in the audience there. Milt, would you stand up? Just stand up. No, we hurry up. There's Milt right there, everybody. He's my dearest friend, and there he is. We go back to the year six. But many, many, many years ago, we met and we've had such fun. But among other things, Milton created the Magic Castle. It's up on the hill just above. It's his, it's his baby. And he's done many wonderful things. Richard, 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 which, by the way, uh, Mel, correct me if I'm wrong, is the Magic Castle celebrating its 50th anniversary this year? Yeah, 50 years. 50 years. <laughs> anyway, Joel, I, I, Milton and I uh, proceeded to write some songs. And unfortunately, we were just doomed to, to have su not, no, no successes. Everything was wrong. I think our timing might have been off. You know, of all sad words of tongue and pen, the saddest of these it might have been. That's exactly what this is all about. And so I'm going to play you four of my favorite and Milton's favorite smash flops. <laughs> Be a hot, hot time in Lakers, New Jersey, when the Hindenburg lands today. Richard today uh, by naming 
the, the dressing room, the Richard and Robert Sherman VIP dressing room. The, the dressing room, and as you can see, it's all decorated in early Sherman. <laughs> it was one of the biggest thrills of my life, it truly was, it was amazing. Yeah, and, and he didn't know it, but on the other side of the door were all his friends. Oh, they were all stoned away, it was a big surprise. Yeah. Oh, there he is, looking, looking shocked. Man, you're big. And he doesn't get to keep the scissors. <laughs> so to wrap things up, now we, we've got to get everybody vocalized. Say me, 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 me. Oh, who said do you, you, you? <laughs> we have the perfect song to end with. I want everybody to stand up. Everybody up, 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 up. up come on, stand up. Now, this song is going to require some swaying, so give yourself some swaying room, okay? And when Richard starts, you all sing along to 